Hey there and welcome to this video on the web data grid and what I'd like to do is demonstrate how to set up a manual CRUD scenario. Now the web data grid does a really good job of working with data source controls in order to enable auto CRUD and, and what that allows you to do is basically do persistence operations without having to implement a lot of your own code. And that works in a lot of cases but sometimes you might have a need to tap in and get a little more control over the process. And so the manual CRUD approach is what will give you that control. So to demonstrate how everything looks, it's, it's basically much like what you've seen before if you've seen some of the other videos on manual CRUD. But we have a grid that is bound up to a data source. And first, if I want to come in and add an item here, I can just uh, do this. And when I press Enter, that will update the, the data source. Now, I can do an update as well. So I'll take this item and just update his name and when I when I come off of the record there it persists and then also I can come through and select an item with the row selector press the delete key and it deletes the item so that those are all crud operations that are happening based off of some some pretty basic code that I've written but nonetheless it gives you the opportunity to have full control over the process so let's drop into Visual Studio and I'll show you what's involved so here we are back in Visual Studio 2008 and I have a uh, ASPX page with a script manager on it and uh, a web data grid. And not much has been done to the grid. I put some, some columns on here because I just want to keep the, um, the example pretty basic in the beginning. So the first thing that I want to do is customize a property for the web data grid. And I'll come over here and I need to add a value to the data key fields. Now I know that the ID is the property that I'm working with, which is basically the primary key value for, for my object collection. So I'm sticking ID there in the data key fields. Another thing that I need to do is turn off the enable Ajax flag. Since we're doing a manual CRUD, I need to be able to have the postbacks to work with in order to harness the server side events that handle the CRUD operations. Once we have those in place, we can come over and start customizing the behaviors. So we're turning on activation so that some of the client events will fire as we use the grid. And then we can come down to the editing core and turn on cell editing, row adding, and row deleting. And uh, row deleting has a dependency on the selections behavior, so it, it adds that force there, and that's what that, that uh, modal was. Now when I come to the editing core, what I want to do is come to the auto crud property and switch that to false. So we're turning off auto crud at this point. And with cell editing, I can come in here and say the edit mode actions, I want to turn this on on key press. And same with row adding, edit mode actions, enable on key press. So we'll turn those on as well. It just makes it a little easier to work with the grid so that you can go into an edit mode when you press a key. Now the last uh, little bit here that I'll do in the designer is come back over to the properties and open up the events. Now as things happen in the grid, you add, delete, and update. You have an event that fires after the row is added and one that happens right before the row is being added. So we're going to use the ING events here. So uh, row adding, row deleting, and row updating. So let's just go ahead and generate these really quickly. And so again, we have adding, deleting, and updating. So there's just a little bit of code that we need to write in order to make everything work correctly. And so I'll start pasting in some code and talking about it uh, piece by piece here. So what I'm starting with here is an instance of the person repository. And this is wrapped up against the web state repository just as a way to make, basically make the, the collection of objects that I'm using. Um, do we just tuck it into session? So that makes this demo a little more portable. So you would go about this part of your, your code a little bit differently. But the, the point is, is that you end up with some sort of repository, some sort of data access class, some, some way to interface with your, your data store. So once I have the, the person repository, then I can um, implement a method that will allow me to get all of the items that I'm looking for and bind it up to the grid. So I've got this method here, bind data. So first of all, I'm going to look at the web data grid and I'll clear the rows just to make sure that we're, we're working with a clean slate. And then I'll go to my repository and say get all. The, the values that are returned from this get all are set to the data source and finally I can data bind. So what I want to do is make sure that I'm binding data on every page load. 
And this is necessary in order for all of the events to fire in the proper order so that the, the grid is aware of any of the latest changes that happen to the data store. The rest of it's pretty simple actually. And so let's take a look at what happens when you do an add. So here I'm creating a new instance of my person and, and my repository class, you can see it, to do an insert, I'm just passing in an instance of, of a person. So I create that new person and then I can take a look at the event args. So if you see the row adding event args, it comes up as the E uh, variable. And um, I can take a look at the values. And from those values, it's basically a hash table with the, the property name and its, its value. So I can say first name and convert that to a string and last name. So here I'm inserting an item so I don't have an ID value that I'm working with. My repository will, will take care of that. Now, I, if you notice carefully what's happening here is on page load, we'll bind to the data, then it will recognize the change that's happening, the, the item that's being added to the data store. And so we're adding that in and then we have to bind data again. And this is necessary because if the item that you are adding were to show up on a different page and you had paging enabled or you had sorting enabled, um, we need to rebind the grid again at this point in order for it to sort out all the different placements. So this is the only one we need to do this with on, when we do the deleting and updating, just binding at page load will be enough. But here we need to make sure that that happens again. So much like what happened um, in the insert, we can go ahead and paste in the code for the updates. And my repository, once again, is taking a, an instance of uh, the person class. And so here, based off of the, the arguments that are passed into this, this method here, um, I can get to the row, and from the row I can get to the data key. And if you remember from the very beginning, I told the, the data keys of, to pass in the ID. So I know that the ID will be put in, put in here, and all I need to do is convert it to an integer and set it equal to ID in order to, to, to fill out the person class. These lines of code are basically the same thing as what we did in the add, and so then we can do a repository.update and pass in the person, and everything should work for us. The final piece of the puzzle is to enable deleting, and so we'll use the same approach that we did below using the event args, looking inside the row, looking into the data key in order to get the ID um, for this item, and we can just pass in the ID down to the repository in order to remove it. So. Once we have all of that available, we should be able to run this and have a full CRUD scenario built up for the web data grid. So we can come into this item and uh, make our change. It recognizes that change and updates. I can delete this one here. And I can even add a new one. And that gives you the full circle of how to do a manual CRUD approach using the web data grid. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.